On July 19, 1989, banjo player Pete Wernick, his wife, and six-year-old son boarded United Airlines 232. The Wernicks were flying to Pete's parents' house before heading on to the Winterhawk Bluegrass Festival that weekend in Greene County, New York, to play with his band at the time, Hot Rise. Well, the day also happened to be Children's Day. It was a United Airlines promotion that allowed kids to fly for one cent. So, of the close to 300 passengers on the flight, 60 of those were children, some flying without their parents. Well, an hour into the flight, the fan disc of the tail-mounted engine exploded. The shrapnel went through the shell of the plane and it severed the hydraulic system. Captain Al Haynes, co-pilot Bill Records, and flight engineer Dudley Dvorak felt a jolt. The autopilot disengaged and the throttle and fuel supply controls were completely jammed. The pilots also found the control column or yoke that controlled the pitch and the roll of the plane was completely dead. Well, the crew contacted maintenance personnel on the ground because the radio still worked, fortunately. They were told that the possibility of a total loss of hydraulics on the DC-10 was considered so remote that no procedure existed for them. They were completely on their own. Well, Denny Fitch, an experienced United Airlines captain and DC-10 flight instructor, happened to be on the passenger list of that flight. As an instructor, Fitch had practiced in a simulator a number of emergency events, including a 1985 Japan Airlines flight crash where the hydraulics had failed. And his theory was that it was possible to control an aircraft using the throttles only in a scenario such as this. Fitch was brought into the cockpit to assist, and while Captain Al Haines tried to gain back control of the column, he asked Fitch to take control of the throttle. So by controlling the throttles of the engines on the wings, Fitch was able to make rough steering adjustments and actually stop the plane from doing a complete rollover. Air traffic control had organized an emergency landing at Sioux Gateway Airport in Iowa, so the flight started to head there. With no flaps to control speed or the sink rate, United Airlines 232 approached the cleared runway at 250 miles per hour, dropping at a rate of 300 feet per minute. Moments before landing, the plane rolled slightly to the right. The plane's right wing made contact with the ground, spilling fuel, which ignited immediately, and the wing severed from the plane. Now, reports on the ground were that the aircraft was cartwheeling, but that was just the right wing tumbling end over end. The left wing, which was still attached to the fuselage, rolled up and over, and the plane came to a stop upside down. Of the 296 people on board, 112 died in the accident. 47 were seriously injured, 125 had minor injuries, and 13 had no injuries at all. All four crew members were amongst the survivors, and all four crew members would eventually return to full flight duty. Well, Pete Wernick found himself upside down in his seat. He was able to unbuckle himself and he fell to the ceiling of the plane, which was on the ground. He was able to get his wife and six-year-old son safely out and found himself in the middle of a cornfield in Iowa, surrounded by eight-foot stalks of corn, having no idea where he was. Initial reports were everyone on United Airlines 232 were dead, as no one expected the pilots to be able to land a DC-10 with no hydraulics. In fact, expert pilots who recreated the events of United Airlines 232 and flight simulators never even made it close to the ground. The National Transportation Safety Board reported that under the circumstances, flight crew performance was highly commendable and greatly exceeded reasonable expectations. Well, after the events of Wednesday, July 19th, Pete, his wife, and his son were able to fly from Iowa to Pete's parents. They spent the Thursday contacting close friends and family to inform them that they were all still alive and well. And on Friday, July 21st, two days after the crash, Pete went on stage to play with Hot Rise at the Winterhawk Bluegrass Festival in Greene County and were listening to the first song that Hot Rise played at the festival. Pete Wernick grew up in a Jewish household in the Bronx, and as a teenager, Pete discovered he was an atheist. The crash further cemented his lack of belief in a deity. In an interview with Life magazine titled Finding God on Flight 232, Pete said that if a good God really existed, he could have and would have saved everyone on that flight. Another survivor of the crash was a 1988 Gibson Granada banjo that Pete was traveling with. 
The neck of the banjo was completely cracked during the crash of that plane, but it was eventually repaired by the Gibson company. The resonator also had a crack in it. I think eventually it was fixed with duct tape. And the banjo is still played today by Pete Wernick.